everybody and welcome back to the Hearthstone Legendary Series he here at ESL. We are one match away from concluding day one. My name is TJ Osmo, QD Sanders, and joined by Hyped once again. And uh, hashtag Plantronics is good, and if you don't, don't use it, you're going to lose. Yes. Is that the whole thing? That is. That okay. is the whole thing. All right. We've seen the commercial a couple times now. I've had time to learn the, the ins and outs of, of Plantronics. And uh, I mean, those, those guys have been great to us. Of course, you can see behind us, our bear has the Plantronics headset on, one of the sponsors on board this season, definitely helping us out a lot. So uh, I love to see those commercials. But again, last match of the day is going to be an elimination match between Bub Senpai and Fanatics Caldi. A loser is out of the tournament, and winner moves on to the playoff stage tomorrow. Both these guys um, had pretty close matches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, Bub Senpai, we thought he was going to win. He was, like, doing so good, and then he mm -hmm. lost. And yeah. then Caldi got game five against Stripe Crow. Mech Mage, just Mech Mage, what can you do? Yeah. And these guys are from, like, complete opposite corners of the world. Yeah. L literally, Caldi is from Iceland, and Bub Senpai is from New Zealand. Yeah, if you do, there's, like, a website where you like, where's the opposite side of the world? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they would get each other. Yeah, and both completely different players as well. Bub Senpai has only been playing Hearthstone for a couple of months. Caldi has been a veteran since... Um, He's been playing for a long time. Uh, he's on Fnatic uh, with Frezar, I think, is the only other Fnatic player right now. And uh, he's got, like, a puzzle series on, on Fnatic's YouTube. He's got all sorts of stuff. He's really, like, deep into the Hearthstone competitive scene right now. Whereas Bub Senpai is barely even scratching the surface. He said he doesn't compete in many tournaments. Um, and he, he just started recently, and he found ESL and... Uh, he started competing, so cool. just two completely different stories for these players. It's really cool to see. That's what we we're going for. Yeah, I think that's what Blizzard wanted with with Hearthstone as well. Yeah, you're talking about last season, kind of brought uh, Zayle and Soundstorm into the spotlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys were uh, Soundstorm had a little bit of exposure yeah. before that, but Zayle he really uh, made his home from the Legendary series and got picked up by Team Archon, and now um, he streams quite frequently, and it's pretty much because of uh, of the legendary series that did that, so you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> no, but it's uh, Mage versus Druid is going to be the first matchup here. And Kaldi is right now 0 and 3 with this Mage. Yeah. Strife Crow picked up all three of his wins in this best of five against Kaldi against his Mage. Yeah. He was preying on it. This is why this is why Mac Mage is good in tournaments though, is because Druid is so popular. So, I mean, if, if Kaldi doesn't pick up a win here, he's going to be really depressed with the uh, mage. He's, yeah. he's going to delete it. Kaldi is always, he, he gives a greeting every single, every single match. Polite. He's a really friendly guy. Okay, I'll take a note. I will make a note to squelch him. I don't, <laughs> don't want to see that greetings. Yeah. Kaldi was talking to me about Icelandic foods. Oh, yeah, what they got? I know about that. Well, I know about that. Hakartl? I know all about that. You do? I do. It's fermented shark. Yum. <laughs> Yummy. All right, so Druids, you'd want the zombie chow. He didn't get it. But uh, Keeper of the Grove and Treader. Keeper actually doesn't kill much, although you can make the choice of whether he wants to silence or just nuke the the mad scientist. I think you go for the uh, the silence here. Yeah. Uh, one of the ways that... Or you can nuke the Cogmaster. Does he really want to? No, I think you go with the uh, silence on yeah. the... Yeah, one of the ways that Druid can um, win against Mech Mage uh, is they have to be able to have answers to like their first like three threats. Yeah, or else the the board just gets out of control because they have no way to deal with like a a medium sized board, like a, a board a medium sized yeah, board for medium sized creatures. Never does it. Uh, actually, hmm. okay. So there's a few options. It's either Shredder or. Uh, Nuke the thing or sounds the the scientist. They're all pretty decent. Um, it turns out with uh, no mechs in Caldi's hand that he could ignore the Cogmaster if he wants. He could silence the. He doesn't even have to nuke the scientist. He can just silence the scientist right now. I like silencing the scientist because Mirror Entity is such a problematic card for yeah. Druid to deal with. Especially with his hand right now. Yeah. I, I think this is a, a necessity. Uh, he does curve out pretty nicely. Like but he could, uh, he could um, just play the Shredder, and then who cares if you give him a Keeper? You know, it's just a 2-4. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully we see the Silence. Yeah, he's definitely going to Silence. It was either Nuke the right one or Silence the left one. It was with the Silence. And Caldi, he's like, 
It's like, man, how does he's like Mac Mage is so good against Druid, but how do you lose it like this with kind of a well, But I mean, Water Elemental is great. It's sure it's not a mech, yeah. but it's still a great card against Druid. The Locks lockout out your power. power, yeah, really important. And Caldi had some strong matchups in the last series as well, and he gets to the point where <laughs> I was in such a good spot. How did I even lose this? But it's a different type of Mech Mage. I mean, it's the 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 Rainad, the Rainad Mage. Yeah. Oh no, he's his is different because he's got Harrison. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's the Caldi Mage. Yeah, Caldi Mage. Okay. It's been dubbed. Yeah, he doesn't kill the Cog Master though. Yeah. Right. Scientists can't get buffed up. All right. Um. Wow, that's so. So awkward. awkward. Yeah. yeah, it's a, a clunky hand. I mean, he's playing Harrison. He's playing the Spider Tanks over the Harvest Golem. I, I say he deserves it because th those are the choices that I make when I play Mech Mage. Yeah. With the Blink Chan, I'd say no, 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 no Harrison. That's too greedy. No Spider Tank. Got to go with the Harvest Golem. Um. So yeah. But I mean, the double seven drop is a little weird. It's not like those. It's not like those are the cards clogging his hand. But if we yeah. saw like maybe his Mulligan, maybe he did have some cards in his Mulligan like the Harrison. That he got yeah. a better mulligan if he didn't have it, but yeah. <laughs> Alright, so what does he got? Nothing. <laughs> I uh, mean, now, Strife Crow played the Blast Mage that one game. And he lost that game anyways, though. Um, Blast Mage is a little weak to Druid playing because 4 HP, swipe. Kaldi's got it. I mean, above Senpai's got it. I don't mind this play. Yikes. Oh, it's fine. You just... Uh, Water mental face. Yeah. Your water mental is going to live. Mm -hmm. As we can see, it's going to get swiped, but. Still, though, that pilot shredder ended up being like a. What, a 7 5? I'm not sure what this trade accomplishes, except for playing around Savage Aura a little bit, which he does have. Mm -hmm. um, oh, man. You got a Lotha. Come on. Yeah. Don't swipe. Swipe's still going to be there next turn. Yeah, exactly. And you get to, it's a cleaner with the hero power, yeah. even though Water Elemental might hit, but you got to go with the Loath. Come on. Yeah. He's basically locking him out from having sort of a comeback mechanic on yeah. board. Like, he wouldn't be able to fireball, so he'd have to build his board. And since last, his turn was so weak that turn, you know that his hand's probably clogged up. Yeah, and 5-5 five, five is, that's good. That's, that's like fantastic. Good. Yeah. It's like not like you're paying anything to get the effects. You get the effect for free, because you play the 5-5, five, five, yeah. Um, and then you get, you have the option to force nature next turn if you want to. It can be. It's probably not going to be good, but it, it can be. All right. So we see the uh, blast mage ping. Probably it's all he's got. Yeah. Uh, it is activated. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. See if he can get some nice blasts. Yeah. So Caldi favors. He favors trading a lot. But that blast mage is telling him not to trade. I'm pretty sure. No, no, no. He's gonna. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, if he doesn't do this trade, he gets swiped pretty hard. Yep. So, yeah, I guess the water mental throwing it in does avoid swipe pretty well. Yeah, he's playing around swipe. Okay, it's pretty good. I I, I take back my... Your wince. My no, no, no. <laughs> and uh, he knows that... Either way, if uh, if he has swipe, then he needs to put that two damage to face instead of putting in the two damage. Yeah, all right. All right, good play by Caldi, but it worked out. It's okay. perfect. Now He's he redeemed himself. We've yet to see Blinktron played yet, and Blinktron's one of my favorite cards. Yeah, I love to see it come out. Yeah. So. Just because it's it's RNG, but it's for both players. Yeah. Which is not something that you usually get to see very often. Like, both players get a random element added. It's only a little annoying when it's like you give like a rogue like a wind fear weapon. It's like, come on, <laughs> you didn't need that. <laughs> give him doom hammer, and then it's. It is annoying though when, when you use it, and like one player gets the clearly superior weapon. Like you play it, and you get lights justice, and you look over, and they have like gladiator's longbow, and you're like, right, come on, <laughs> come on, that's man. not fun. All right, so he's, he's a little worried about. Uh, he doesn't want to get big game hundred, although. Yeah, um, on six, on seven mana, swipe wrath. That's about it. Um, she's making the call. He doesn't have swipe wrath. And five seven, like Druid just can't deal with it efficiently. Sounds like that's not good. You, you sort of have to though, because yeah, you play have to, He just has a an endless cycle of yeah, yeah. of fireballs. 
I'm just saying Caldi's happy with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And followed up with a Dr. Boom. Although I am surprised that he played it with the Clockwork Gnome in hand. You'd think he would have saved it, but like I said, 5-7 is pretty solid. Yeah. He just saw the swipe. He knows the swipe wrath is going to On an empty board, uh, he's thinking that, oh, he's yeah. going to be able to make this thing live for a long time. He's seen a keeper as well, too, so uh, putting him on having a second keeper or yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Izzy did the innervate combo, though. It's uh, 25. It's 19. 18 plus 5. 23. Not, not dead to innervate combo. <laughs> I'm so much better at math when I'm not casting, I swear. Everybody is. It's yeah. a curse, man. It's the curse. You sit behind this desk and you look at this monitor, and you just can't do math. I don't even try anymore. I let <laughs> I just let the other the caster do it. And Dan doesn't do it either. So when there's counting to be done, it's just a standoff. I'm not going <laughs> to count. I'm not going to count either. Well, then we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. What does he got? Nothing. Got a... Well, I mean, he could try and uh, cycle with Wrath, but if he doesn't pick up anything, then he could have a dead turn. So he actually doesn't know that there's two fireballs because those weren't made off Antonitis, right? No, they weren't. No, those are just good old-fashioned. But that's actually kind of good in this scenario because he, he has the option to uh, do a roar. Not really. If he roars... Oh, man. If he roars, he can... um. He can hit his face in the shade into the um, Antonitis, and then he can Wrath the uh, Dr. Boom. But yeah, then he's dead to a uh, double fireball. Yeah. Such a tough play. Okay. Oh, he could force nature and Wrath for one to clear the boom. Yeah. The Wrath is nice because, you know, this is, it's an odd HP. Okay. I thought he would Wrath for three, but uh, all right, he's dead, right? 12, 17, 18, 19, yeah. Yep. Gonna double count in his head right quick, but Caldi, you can tell he looks excited because he's finally managed it's to like, take take a victory with his uh, yeah, with this mage. <laughs> he's actually probably a little excited. He's like, man, I gotta play this tomorrow if I win. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they have to keep the, the same decks for tomorrow since so it's the same tournament structure. So, Caldi finally manages to take a victory with the newly dubbed Caldi Mage. And Bub Senpai, um, his, his Druid, he hasn't had uh, as much success. Of course, uh, he did win one game. Well, no, he hasn't, actually. I don't think he's won a single game with Druid yet. Yeah, he had that really close game against Handlock. Oh, no, no, he, he did win. Okay, okay. The Handlock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's going to have to win a game in this series if he's going to want to move on. But uh, Caldi, he's got to be feeling pretty good about that because he did have a really close series with Strife Crow, went to game five, and the mage was just sort of the downfall. So getting that out of the way early, you said Conquest, that's sort of what you want to do yeah. is throw out your weak decks early on, try and pick up a victory. Which is clearly the mage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clearly the mage, as we've see, seen thus far today. Uh, but now he's got to go to his, his more reliable picks, um, I think he has Paladin and Rogue. Paladin and Rogue, yeah. Which se seems to be a trend here. Uh, it seems like people are going with either Paladin Warlock or Paladin Rogue as their two classes yeah. uh, that are staple. And then they throw in something like Hunter or Mage or uh, Druid as sort of like their third class. That seems to be a trend thus far today. Paladin, I think, has been brought by nearly every player. Yeah, every I think it is every player. Paladin, 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 Paladin. Yep, every player. Every single player brought Paladin today. So. Oh, not GCG Terth. He went Shaman. Priest oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I think we have every single class represented. And Coroneco didn't go Paladin either. Oh, no, maybe he did. I can't read my own writing. <laughs> it's something. It's a problem. What other classes start with a P? <laughs> Priest. Oh no, it could be anything. Uh, well, next matchup is going to be uh, Kali going with the Paladin versus Bub Senpai's Druid. So, uh, that's a pretty good matchup. Yeah. I think that's the what he was trying to get and reading that Bub Senpai would probably try and go with the same thing. Yeah, Caldi's thinking is that uh, his rogue can easily win versus all those classes, so we'll save mm -hmm. it for last. His paladin, you know, want, he can beat Druid, kind of struggles versus Mage, and, uh, you know, he doesn't want to play the mirror. Yeah. If he doesn't have to. Yep. But he will play the mirror before he brings out his rogue. Yep. Alrighty. Um, now, Bub Senpai actually had a Mage deck. Did we end up seeing that Mage deck? 
I don't think we have. Yeah. Oh, we must have. No, no, no. No, because in Conquest, if you lose, yeah, yeah, we didn't see it. Yeah. So, uh, still not sure what that deck is, but we are going to have to see it if he's going to want to go. Wild Growth Start. We actually haven't had many, like, explosive Druid Starts thus yeah. far today. Uh, we saw Wild Growth earlier from Life Coach, but then his, his hand sort of just died out after he had that Wild Growth Start with Double Savage War. So, uh, this could be an opportunity for Bub Senpai to... Uh, to Still going to struggle. I'd be happy, like, with, like, a Chow Wild Growth Start against uh, Paladin, but... Well, it's still a possibility. Yeah, but it's like you want to clear all the Paladin's little stuff on the board, but your Shredder doesn't... You don't want to attack your Shredder into weaker things, you, like, at least not the mini-bot. Mm -hmm. the, the standoff begins. Yeah. At the beginning of the day, players weren't really caring about the other players' mulligans. But then as the day went on, everybody, like, followed suit. I think it, it's the exact same time, but since we're getting more tired... Watching, we're like, come on. <laughs> it's probably, we're like, oh, yeah. it's probably true. At the beginning of the day, we, we had like matchups to talk about. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, Mage versus Paladin. And now we're just sitting here staring at their mulligans, wondering, wow, they've been staring at each other's mulligans for about five minutes now. Uh, yeah. No, it's been about 10 seconds. All right, so he's got a good curve, um, the Druid. But it's more like a, he doesn't want to trade down with any of those things. He just wants to go face with all of it. So he'll probably just like, taunt the Druid of the Claw and then uh, go face with the Shredders. Mm -hmm. A little bit awkward with the coin. Um, Do you throw down a tempo Aldor here? Oh man, is it a tempo out? You lose an attack. But I mean, what else can you do? Yeah, I guess here uh, you kind of want to don't you don't really want to fall. Oh no, it's an Anoyotron now without taunt. Oh no, it's a. Uh, oh, you don't. Okay. Oh, uh, you don't have to. Okay. I was thinking BGH. I was like, oh jeez. <laughs> Yeah. Seven games in. Please send help. <laughs> uh, Alright, Belcher is pretty solid. Yeah. They can follow it up with the Druid of the Claw as well. He's actually weak to that True Silver, though, as we see. But uh, the Druid of the Claw would have been weaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's pretty... I mean, he could power to Shredder here, but True Silver Champion seems like the obvious choice. He can clear yeah. the board. Plus, he sees that coin on the five drop, so he's thinking there's a second one. Yeah, yeah. Thinking, so he drew to the claw, as your Drake. Harrison, though, would be sick. Off the top. Nope. Uh, he's got a lot of good things to do, though. I mean, uh, yeah, he's so got now five you could just play turn. the Shredder. Yeah. But I think you probably still go with the Drew to the claw, and then you could shred a Wrath next turn. Yeah. A charge is an option, too. Charge the Aldor. Um, but yeah. I think you taunt now to because you you still have a turn to, for yeah. Black Knight and then you charge later if you have to if you want to yeah. use Black Knight and you want him to use that second true silver champion charge as well yeah All right is he thinking about the Al the acolyte yeah Need the acolyte on the board because he's got the Aldor in hand yeah yeah that's a really great combination and, one of the reasons why Paladin started to put in acolyte of pain is because a lot of 1-1 one -one tokens right now in the game with uh, rogues running by the teachers, a lot of paladins running around, and uh, if you outdoor something and then you can get, it, you're always almost going to get uh, two draw, two draws at least out of that Acolyte of Pain. Yeah. Some of the problem though is like, uh, say you, a warrior gets two draws off your Acolyte, their Acolyte, you're really scared, but sometimes the paladin, they, they don't have the mana to actually cast all those spells, so they need more time. And yeah. That, you know, they don't really have enough time to use all those cards sometimes. That's true. That's true. If they don't draw into their quality consecrate that they're looking for. Because it's another thing, they only get they only get the one draw that turn, then they have to wait the next turn to get the draw, so yeah. it's not quite as good. So bonus on curve. Feels pretty nice here. Yeah, he's been doing all the tempo plays. His the hand tempo is, out or Yeah. Might see a tempo BGH, a tempo heal bot. Ooh. Although actually he would get most of the heal. So we could, he could take the risky play here, uh, but it's... I don't know, if you look at his hand though, don't you want to go face? Yeah, uh, I was going to say like charge shooter of the claw, yeah. um, and then go face. Oh wow, <laughs> he could actually okay. utilize this. Oh no, he can't, because it, it fades, it's only one. 
So it looks like it's seven right now, but as soon as he casts one, he'll lose the pint size buff. Oh, really? Yeah, it's only the first creature. Oh, yeah. They well, nerfed the, it. That's what I meant, though. Oh, would you, which one are you looking at? Like, he can... Uh, his Druid the Claw costs one less mana now. Yeah, but well, I was looking at, like... I was looking at the, the Shredder and the Druid the Claw as, like, perfect sevens. Oh, yeah, cast yeah, them yeah. Both. No. Yeah, it, I guess it's pretty inconsequential. I mean, the only thing that would matter is he could pilot a Shredder and swipe this turn, which otherwise he wouldn't. But yeah. swipe isn't even that good here. So... It doesn't affect anything, but it's still kind of uh, interesting. Is he gonna charge the face? Oh. Oh. So he's hoping to trade the the pint size into the Sylvanas next turn. Yeah. Or at least maybe s swipe plus pint size into something cleanly. One of the nice things too is about about the shredder is like it's so strong early, but even on those late tank, late game turns, you're like, all right, I cleared a druid's board. He's only gonna play one thing. I'm good to go. And then all of a sudden they do like shredder shade, innervate something out. You're like, okay, I can't kill all three <laughs> when one has stealth, one has death rattle. The other one's a big dude. Yeah. Uh, I like Al uh, Aldo Peacekeeper on the druid claw and consecrate here, and throw the Sylvanas in. Um, it probably yeah, be, but it's, it's weak you are to swipe. About swipe. You're yeah. like four HP is the same as one against a giant. But there's um, not many strong. Yeah, what else? Other is strong here? plays. Yeah, the consecrate doesn't do enough. But what else? Uh, I guess the consecrate lets outside play of a quality consecrate, how much else is it going to do in a druid matchup, though? Well, I guess shades. He shades. Yeah. Okay, is he going to go for the acolyte? Yeah. So, so now swipe. Oh, he's going to. Okay, okay, I like it, I like it. I like it, I like that. Just leave it alone. Yeah. So now if he wants to swipe, he throws it into the... Okay, swipe is still pretty good. Swipe hero power, kills everything, only gives him one jaw if he cares about the jaw. Which, I mean, if you look at the paladin's hand, he is going to be in really bad shape if he only gets one jaw off that acolyte. Yeah. Yeah, swipe is awesome here. Uh, maybe he can get away with not hero powering though, and just playing a creature. Paladin Shredder after the swipe. Yeah. You play it first to save that mana. No, and the Sylvana steals it. Actually, uh, I wasn't. I was thinking the Druid would die because I was imagining last turn, but the Druid of the Claw he actually gets the Druid of the Claw back. Yeah. He can't have it steal the Druid of the Claw with one health before he. Yeah. Unfortunately. So he gives him the one drop. But... That's okay. Maybe it's only if this is fine. Oh, that'd be tempted. Okay, I thought. Okay, I thought he was gonna dodge that. I guess not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of would have uh, liked to see a, a hero power more in that situation. Yeah. So the way he did it, he he lets him have the puddle stomper. Okay. And he yeah. gives him an extra draw. I don't know if I like that. The, yeah. the other way was just to, um, you know, swipe hero power. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, I think Caldy was hoping probably for like a one-one, like a novice engineer, uh, captain spirit. Then he could have got another yeah. draw off it. Made the acolyte go even further. Uh, the unstable ghoul, give him two. I'm always thinking about the unstable <laughs> yeah. ghoul. It's two instantly. Uh, muster. You could feel pretty safe about using muster here, though. Uh, he's seen one swipe. It's uh, not that likely that he has the second one already. We haven't been through too much of the hands just or too much of the decks just yet. Yeah. Plus, how how sad are you when they when you muster and they swipe and the the four the swipe isn't targeted on anything really relevant. They're just basically swiping face. Yeah. And then you get the weapon. And you only spent one less mana. Yeah. Lights justice. Okay. Well, he does have a swipe target now. If you. But yeah. Gives you one extra draw though. Once again. Oh yeah, this was the uh, uh, the Spectral Knight deck. Yeah. So like pure pure mid range. Yeah, it turns out that oh man, giving the Acolyte multiple jaws is actually huge because the Paladin's hand was awful. Yeah. And, and now, now it's, it's okay. amazing. Yeah. And well, he's gonna get more jaws. It's gonna get better and better. And he's at 30 health now as well. So he's got a long time before he has to worry about combo. He's got some time to set up his board. Respecting the quartermaster. Yeah. 
And uh, I think Caldy is saving that muster for... Uh, also, it could have been just that he wanted to fit his curve a little bit better. Uh, I mean, he could have mustered and... Um, and yeah. take kill bot last turn, but... Plus muster quarter matters. Oh, okay. oh, oh. It's Hello. always an insane play against a druid. What yeah. do they do? <laughs> Nothing. Well, we did see an instance earlier where there was two Azure Drakes on the board oh, with yeah, a yeah. druid, and it caused us to just completely ignore the, the fact that there was a BGH. Oh, yeah. I, I f try to forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never forget. It'll haunt you forever. Every single myth le miss lethal while you cast, you'll just have nightmares about. Yeah, he doesn't have to clear anything if you but he will probably clear this stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like keeping the accolade alive because it, it it makes you uh, a, a decision a little bit tougher, like a decision yeah, to swipe. He definitely does not want to throw the lore into that. It'll be really yeah. sad. Yeah. There's a silence. Um so it turns out the accolade will only get one draw if he chooses to silence it, but I don't think he can Oh man, what do you do? I don't uh, think you can afford that because what if Tyrion comes down next turn? Yeah, I mean he's he can't afford that just because like that doesn't clear the board. <laughs> Silencing, yeah. he needs like the new I don't know. Silence, attack, attack. Pretty pretty rough. He could use combo to clear the dudes. Yeah, there's a uh, quite a bit actually. But then how's he gonna win? I don't know. The Paladin is out of cards, but then he doesn't get the silence off. But okay, so nuke that one. Wrath another one. Then play Kazan Mystic. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking for something. Um, swipe isn't even good enough. Wow. Was Bub Senpai the one playing two big game hunter? That's interesting. And the Mystic? That's crazy. That's a lot of tech cards. Yeah. It was really expecting a lot of um, Hunter Mage, which are probably two of the le least represented classes yeah, just so far today. Yeah. It's like three mages, one including his. So two mages and a hunter. And one hunter. That's rough. The paladins are going secret list today. So. Oh, he's getting pretty close, but uh, I mean his hand is pretty poor right now. Um, I would just probably double consecrate here. Yeah, it's pretty good. Just push in. 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah. One damage off. Is it really? Did I do math that bad? I might Eight, have done. We'll, we'll see. I think it's only 13 damage. Let him figure it out. Okay, <laughs> you're at that <laughs> point already. Okay. <laughs> You've been initiated into the elite group of casters that refuse nope. to do math. <laughs> okay, you were right. He's uh, five damage or five health off is still pretty good. But I mean, he's pretty much out of cards at this point. If Bub Sampai manages to stabilize, then I don't see it. It's not yeah. happening. He's got nothing. Uh, forced to use combo here. This is the only way he's gonna that he's able to stay alive. That does not feel good. Nope. Do you even kill the? Do you even give him the draw? Yeah. I mean, anything that does one damage in this deck is gonna do two damage. It throws out the big game hunter just so he has something to do with whatever's thrown on the board. But there's a true silver draw for win. There's a, I mean, there's just so many things. It's it, he really can't deal with these things anymore. Like I see your big game hunter. He's like, I got balls too. <laughs> I'll throw mine out there too. All right. All right. There's there's pretty much nothing crazy negative off that. Like the, uh, but we'll see. I want to see, so I'm happy he swiped. Wow. Cold yeah, there's all the all the things. If you're the player with the sky golem, almost everything benefits you to. Tr if you if you're gonna like trade your sky golem into yeah. something, you do it first. Um, but if you're the opposing player, you don't really want to kill the sky golem because there's yeah. nothing that's gonna help you as the player killing the sky golem. But there are things that are gonna hurt you like that. Yeah, there's nothing like a doomsayer or. Yeah. Uh, Lorewalker Cho can sometimes be a little bit tough to deal with depending on what classes you're playing or you're playing against. But Kaldi's going to take a 2 0 lead in this series. And once again, Bub Senpai falls uh, a little bit short with that, that Druid deck. So Kaldi only has to win one more, and that is with his Rogue. Yeah, pretty solid. Mm -hmm. He can win versus anything. Yeah. It's going to struggle versus that Druid deck with the uh, Spectral Knight. 
Oh, that's very true, yeah. But uh, it can still obvious easily win. Yeah. Spectral Knight is a card that is very good against uh, Priests, very good against Warriors, very good against Rogues. Yeah. It uh, does die to... Uh, it can die to Flurry these days pretty easily. But um, <laughs> These days. Yeah. Anything can die to Flurry these days. Yeah, that's Nothing true. is safe. Rags can die to Flurry. You Flurry down a Rag. Yeah. Flurry down a Draxus on the board. Easy. Nothing Nothing is safe from the Wrath of the Royal Rogue. Uh, but if you're Bub Senpai in this situation, I, I mean, if he's been paying attention, he has to, Well, he's he's actually told the decks beforehand with Conquest. So yeah. uh, he knows what deck is remaining. So uh, if you are Bub Senpai, do you stick with the Druid? Or do you it doesn't go matter much. The Paladin? The is out. Yeah. But yeah. So he definitely doesn't want to go with the Paladin. He'll go, or maybe he's like, all right, let's get it over early. It's like, if I, I got to win with the Paladin. Let's yeah. just do it now before yeah. I waste my time with these other two matches. Oh, well, he sticks with the Druid once again. So he, <laughs> uh, you got to get that win with it, but he's really adamant about getting that win first. Yeah. So I agree. The Paladin thing that I said, like, let's get the game over with, it's, that's the wrong attitude. That's probably a losing attitude. Yeah. So. It's good to see he's like thinking positive. He's like, all right, let's get these wins. And we'll get the Paladin Hyped win. Hyped is a bad influence oh, on yeah. tournament, on conquest tournament players everywhere. He's starting to get bitter towards the end of the day. But uh, this is last match of the day. Bub Senpai is actually one game away from being eliminated, and Caldy is one game away from securing his spot tomorrow in the playoff stage. Of course, uh, whoever wins this series does still have a, a grueling road ahead of them. Losing that first match in their group means that they have to play one more match than everybody else. So um, it's a difference. It, even if they win, they still have to play like three matches tomorrow if they're going to want a chance at winning. But here we go. Mulligan's up on Great the screen. Violet Teacher Sap is what you want. So you coin the Violet Teacher, and then you you just sap his Shredder when he plays it, and you win. <laughs> it's that easy. Yeah. Um, there you go. Well, if Bob Senpai doesn't pick up the wild growth. <laughs> More guys from Hype at TempoStorm.com. <laughs> Check out my snapshot. <laughs> you think he'll keep that, though? Does everybody see that type of play? Um, I would definitely keep... I would, the Vod Teacher's a definite keep. With this hand, since you're going to coin the Teacher, you don't really want to play the Thalnos on two because you want to dagger up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't have the Teacher, you can see, sometimes you play the Thalnos out on, like, turn two or three to interrupt their Druid, make them hero power it. But with a hand like this, you don't. You definitely just want spells to go with your teacher. And I think Sap is great, but some people have it in their mind that Sap is like that's something you play later. Yeah. But against the Druids these days, they don't have big things to Sap. You don't you don't want to Sap Doctor Boom. You don't want to Sap Lore, typically. Um, I mean, you you do, but it, there's better Sap targets. And you'd rather yeah. this to Lore and Sap something like a Shredder that comes yeah. down early that's hard to deal with. Yeah. Um, he tossed oh. the Shredder to look for the Wild Growth, though. Also, it punishes an early Innervate play as well. Yeah. Uh, you're effectively forcing, uh, using a card to basically waste them a card plus gain you a lot of tempo. Yeah. Although sometimes with the early plays, you don't get tempo because you don't to do anything. But, you know, you burn their innervate. Um, this wild, this deadly poison is going to punish this Kazan so hard. Okay, he got the Shredder. But, um, oh, I wouldn't mind it. That It would actually be pretty good here. BGH? Yeah, it would stop the coin... It would stop the coin, um, Violet Teacher. He could so, coin Violet Teacher and then backstab. If he gets it. But if he, yeah, that's true. But if, okay, so if Bub Senpai didn't play this here, he would have just lost the game. So that is that is a prime example of a very good tempo BGH. Um, he's still probably just going to yeah. have the coin SS7 deadly. Yeah. But still. So if you don't do this play, then uh, you could get punished very hard. You could also get very punished very hard for doing it. Yeah, it's definitely, most of the time, you get punished when you go for that. But, you know, he's, like, thinking maybe he was watching the other games. He knows Caldi doesn't even play Dr. Boom. Mm. Um, sometimes I can kill an oil and Edwin, but it's fine. But yeah, so I like this. So he puts the deadly on. So now he can, now uh, Bob Senpai can't even play his four drops because they just died a deadly. At yeah. least the first half of Shredder does. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't. Okay, so he saves the SI7. Yeah. That's fine. Although the 4, H 4 damage kind of is a lot. 8 damage now. Alright, so no good teacher plays, but he has to play it. He can't cast a spell with it. Um, he doesn't have to play it. He could, um... But he can't coin out a 5 drop because he wants to, like, teacher plus 2 mana spell next turn if he doesn't play it this turn. So it would just be SI7 or nothing. So actually, I think SI7 would have been better last turn. That's okay, though. Not the worst. 
Oh, his own Dr. Boom. Okay, he has a, doesn't have any good plays. No, not for the next couple of turns. Uh, turn seven, he'll be able to play either Ancient of War or Dr. Boom, but... Unless he gets pint-sized. Then he could uh, hear oh. power. Wild Pyro is not, not too shabby. Yeah, um... So maybe he could... Okay. Okay, actually, this is actually decent. The Zombie Chow is actually decent, because now he can get, like... He gets some, like, a sick roar play with the Pyromancer damage. Do something crazy. So we we talked about it a little bit earlier, but uh, there were some plays that happened where there was an early flurry used. Yeah. You were very critical of it. I think here this is a very clear um, Earthen Ring SI7, unless he. But he really wants to hold on to the coin we've seen. Oh, uh, actually, okay. Did uh, I didn't. Did I say? <laughs> when the BGH went down, I was like, oh yeah, he probably knows Kaldi doesn't have Dr. Boom. There's Dr. Boom right in the hand. Yeah, yeah. So he wants to coin that out. Yeah. That's a pretty strong play. Now, the thing about, uh, what was that match? I don't remember what that match that was the first priest. Uh, against, yeah. uh, against a druid, uh, sure, flurries are great, but at this point, you're expecting just, like, big dudes that aren't really going to get flurry down, mm -hmm. at least by the single deadly. So I'm fine with that. And he wants to coin out the uh, Dr. Boom. Yeah. Well, this is a pretty strong series of plays here for Kaldi because he's going to be able to coin out Dr. Boom and uh, probably going to be matched with a Dr. Boom from Bub Senpai. Yeah, although I think Bub Senpai does play two BGH in his Druid, so he could oh, get it right here. Okay. And that probably went into his decision uh, where he played it on turn three. Now, if, if Dr. Boom does come out here, Sap, push in with Boombots, is that a... Yeah, Sap is pretty good here. Um, oh, he can Sap load the... You got to do that. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you probably, you probably trade at least one bomb if you do that. Start the chain reaction. Yeah, plus you don't want... Um, you know, you don't want to give him too much roar value. Yeah, for sure. Okay, he's not trading. Okay, come on. I mean, like, what do you really gain from this, keeping the one bomb up? <laughs> but he goes for it. Yeah, and this is almost um, for sure going to keep him at least one body up for the next turn, which yeah. uh, he could uh, dagger, deadly poison, uh, tinker sharp sword oil, and, um, I mean... Is Sludge Belcher most likely going to... Well, I don't know. Yeah, I think, more I think about, Yeah. The more I think about it, I do like going face with the bombs because now with the Lothab lockout, you don't really have to worry about the bombs killing you with spells. It's going to be pretty difficult because you can only play creatures. Yeah. And it's pretty hard to kill that Lothab. He's to hit it. Ouch! Oh! Okay. I think... Uh, right, so that was a good uh, series. <laughs> That's... Actually, pretty crazy. Seven so, damage from those bombs, plus yeah. seven damage from that Dr. Boom. That's just really rough. All right, so you, you got to kill the Lothab with the bomb. And then you're still dead. Uh, if he, okay, so he plays the uh, Sludge Belcher. Yeah. And he kills the Lothab. Okay, I think, I think he dead. went face with both. Yeah. Uh, he calls out the well played already. He knows that there's a lot of damage in there. And uh, that was a uh, very... Very quick series here, and not much math needs to be done. And it looks like Kaldi is going to take a 3-0 victory over Bub Senpai. Now, uh, Bub Senpai uh, making it through that open bracket as far as he did uh, with only three months or four months of experience playing Hearthstone under his belt. Not much tournament experience. Uh, that's pretty impressive in itself. He will be eliminated, but he will be, of course, from his performance in the Challenge Cup, he'll be going home with $200. Kaldi, with that 3-0 victory, will move on to the playoff stage tomorrow. Uh, he does have quite a long road ahead of him, though. It's yeah. uh, He's got to win the first elimination match, then he has to go on to the semifinals and the finals. So That's uh, tomorrow. And today, tonight, he celebrates with some fermented shark. Yes, from some awesome. hakatel. Definitely. I, I believe my pronunciation was correct. He was telling me that there's not that many people in the world that speak Icelandic. And uh, I don't think it's that late there. No, it's pretty late. So maybe they're not watching. So there's nobody that can that can punish me for, for saying that word okay. wrong. He said the best way to eat a cartel or a fermented shark is to drown out the poor taste with some hard alcohol. Is so what he if said. it tastes so bad, why do they eat it? <laughs> well, okay. He said that they needed to find ways to utilize the resources that were around 
Iceland and also make sure that they could keep food for a long time because they have to make it to those harsh winters without being able to go out and hunt. So the, the Icelandic cuisine is all based around like just things that, the only things they, they can manage to eat. So it's not like known for <laughs> tasting good. Yeah, it's just w what they can get their hands on. Okay. Uh, that, that's, that's pretty much the lesson that I learned and from browsing the Wikipedia page for like three hours. So all the right, food is so, so bad <laughs> that you have to drown it out. Okay. <laughs> all right, you can take a look on your screen. Those are the groups that we did see today. In group A, of course, Koroniko was the uh, player that moved on to the semifinals. Uh, Limi Jux was eliminated, and of course, GCT Turth and Live Coach will play tomorrow in the elimination matches. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And oh. okay. <laughs> and uh, Group B, of course, uh, Azuzu uh, will be the person moving on to the semifinals. He had a really impressive showing, um, taking down Stripe Crow three to zero. We did have a, win a winner's interview with him. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. Nice guy. Not a liar, as far as liar. as far as we're concerned. Or a very good one, maybe. Or, <laughs> or a very good one. Bub Senpai was eliminated, and Caldi and Strive Crow will play tomorrow in the elimination matches. Uh, once again, guys, we do want to give a big shout out to our sponsors that made all of this possible, and that are going to make season two possible as a whole. We have a lot more action coming throughout this season, and the guys over at Plantronics and Gigabyte are nice enough to help us out. So make sure if you guys want to support esports, if you want to support the Legendary series and Hearthstone as a whole. Make sure you head down to those links below and take a look at them. Uh, also, make sure you guys tweet at us uh, with the hashtag HLS or at ESL Hearthstone. Let, let us know what you thought about today. Uh, let us know uh, who you're rooting for, who you want to see play tomorrow, and uh, what are your thoughts are on the matches. I'm sure we'll be checking Twitter um, after the game today. So hi, do you have any, uh, what are your thoughts on the match today? Do you have any last words? A lot of good matches today. A lot of close ones, a lot of good play too. Or maybe we just didn't see the misplays, but it looked like everyone played very well. And I mean, it makes sense if they had to make it through that 1,000 player bracket uh, mm -hmm. last weekend. And uh, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it was really exciting. And of course, guys, we have giveaways for those uh, lovely viewers watching. Go to esl.gg slash legendary giveaway. We have 50 packs to give away. We have Plantronics rig headsets to give away. Uh, as you can see, our, our bear back here won a giveaway. I stole all his packs, though. Oh. Uh, so he's, anything? Yeah, he's not going to really have much of those. But, uh, of course, guys, we will re be returning tomorrow uh, with the last of the elimination matches for the group, plus the semifinals and the finals, the conclusion for week number one of season two of the Legendary Series. But that's going to be it for us here today. Uh, from everybody here at ESL, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.